and then I could. Okay, sure. Yeah. Now uh, you could share your screen. Let me see. Sorry for that. Can you see my screen? It's already sharing. Post. Yeah. 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 Please go ahead, Rob. Perfect. Thank you so much. So yeah, as I said, what happened in the facial recognition? Every time we are trying to like unlock our iPhone, uh, iPhone, it's taking a snapshot of our face or photo of our face and then sending it to the right model that is already trained. And the model is just responding, yes, uh, this is Rahat, no, it is not Rahat. And based on that request response, uh, the my iPhone is uh, turning on. So this is the approach and that's, that's why we need to uh, like deploy the model. Yes, we can have the model uh, that is uh, working well, we have trained it, but again, to use that model, we need to deploy. So that is the purpose of like uh, today's uh, like session, how to deploy that model that we have just trained. So before we jump into deployment and Azure machine learning, let's let's just like uh, go through like a small uh, like uh, overview, what happened in terms of model training. So when we train the model, uh, we like we have the data store uh, at the left corner, and then we ingest the data. We do lots of data processing. And uh, once the data processing is done, the data featureization is done, we start to train the model. We select the right algorithm, we train the model, we do hyperparameter tuning, and then when uh, everything is done, we test the model. Okay, is it a good model or not? Uh, can we test it or not? That approach. Once when we do the testing, when we are uh, completely uh, sure that this is the model that we want to use in production, then we, then we deploy it. So this is the time when uh, after the deployment, we get an API. As an API, we uh, connect all the uh, web application or mobile application to use that model, send uh, and uh, receive request and response uh, from and to that model. So that's why model deployment is uh, use, like important. Without deploying the model, the model is useless. It's just sitting in the corner and that's it. So when we deploy the model, we can either like uh, test the model as a single request and response. We can also like do batch prediction. That's why uh, both the options uh, needs to be there. And after, de after the deployment, as we are using the model as a single API or like a batch prediction, we also need to make sure that uh, we, need, we are monitoring the model, that the model is performing well, the model is not exhausted, the resources are not exhausted. If we need, we, need, we can add more replicas uh, if, it is, if it is a uh, Kubernetes cluster those kind of things. So that is the actual purpose of the model deployment to have a single uh, request and response approach or batch or, and also like uh, doing proper model monitoring. So that's how we see it. Uh, and it comes at the end of the cycle of end-to-end uh, -end machine learning pipeline. Now, uh, when it's time for Azure machine learning and model deployment, so what happens? We prepared the data we build model in our uh, using our ID or even in the uh, AML as a machine learning uh, like tool, and then we train and test our model. Once we when when after we train and test our model, we and when we are uh, confident, okay, this is the model that we want to use in production. We register the model, and after the register, we can deploy them, build an image, and deploy the model with all the dependencies so that the model can be used as a web web uh, like uh, uh, API or as a single, uh, like uh, as a batch API as well, like uh, for batch prediction. And uh, we can also monitor the model. So what happens? And all those steps that I mentioned end to end can be done in Azure Machine Learning. So this, before we uh, like talk more, let's jump into a, like a quick demo and see what happens. So this is what uh, Azure Machine Learning looks like. Uh, this is the tool uh, where you can uh, use multiple options. One is that uh, you can use your Jupyter Notebook. You can use the automated machine learning tool. We, you can use uh, Designer, which used to be uh, AML Studio in the past, but it has become a designer in the uh, AML uh, pla like, uh, platform. You can uh, do different kinds of like assets, like uh, deploy your data set, like uh, register your data set. Uh, create your experiment, create a pipeline, uh, deploy a model, uh, create an endpoint that is deployed as a model. Uh, as we said, after doing the training and testing of the model, we register a model. So that's where we register the model. We'll show a demo. And uh, that's after the deployment, that's where we see that uh, model. But we also need a uh, compute, like uh, where the model will be deployed, the VM, the cluster. So all those like things are uh, deployed here as a compute. This is one of the first steps that we need to do. 
we also create a neat environment. So when we uh, after, when we deploy the model, so it is a, a like a Conda environment or Docker image. So we also need to provide what are the like uh, dependencies, what are the uh, basic requirements we need to follow. There are already certain amount of like uh, environments are already created. We can also create custom environment. We will also show a demo on that one. And outside of that, we we can uh, also create a data store, uh, like uh, register our data set in the data store, use data labeling as a tool uh, for uh, data annotation and other link services too. Okay, so this is the overall uh, high level demo and it's uh, you can get it ml.azure.com when you create a subscription and then under that subscription, you can create a resource group or uh, as it, like machine learning workspace from where uh, you can actually create the AML environment and everything. So you can see, uh, I put a current uh, directory as a default directory. Our, my current subscription is Visual Studio Enterprise with MSDN. And the current workplace I chose, which is a resource group uh, in East US too, as a AML deployment. And that's it. It's very easy to create. It's very easy to use. Once you create all those like the subscription and the resource group and the uh, workspace from your uh, Azure Machine Learning, uh, Azure, Azure portal, you just open ml.azure.com and select your subscription workspace. That's it. Everything and, and the resource group as well. And everything else is like uh, going to follow. So the first thing we will show is automated machine learning demo, because that's where we are going to create the uh, like uh, the uh, model and download the model from. So the first thing is uh, when we create uh, AM auto ML, uh, let's just like create it uh, again, new auto ML run. And then we need to uh, create a data set. We can use existing data set, but also we need to create a data set. So how we can create a data set, we create, like click uh, local or data store or from a web file or open data set. So let's select uh, like a uh, local. And then uh, the demo is uh, uh, weekend, uh, demo one suppose and i need to upload the data set um which is from my local file so i can select uh, automobile price data set raw so this is a data set that i downloaded as a publicly available data set and create new status is good and you can see uh it's parsing the data set information and doing all the getting all the metadata uh, so that it can give me a, like a glimpse of how the data set looks like, uh, what are the like uh, necessary metadata information I need to know, and do I need to like uh, uh, enable multi-line data uh, on the data set or not? Like for now, no, in this data set, no. And then uh, I can uh, select, like uh, if I don't need all those columns from the data set, I can uh, include and exclude some, uh, we have that option. And also, whichever column we will use as a target column, we can also like select, okay, this is the uh, like a target column needs to be uh, integer because it's a regressional model. Uh, right now it is in a uh, string format, but we are just converting is into a, like an integer format. But why we are moving into price? So what uh, this uh, model does uh, is, it is a data set of automobile. So all those like uh, cars, their uh, basic information is there. Uh, like engine, the uh, build year, the uh, brand, and all those things. Based on that, we also also have the price already done. So what we want to do is we want to train a model that will uh, predict uh, based on new information, what will be the price of that model in USD based on this database. So that, that's why I moved it uh, from uh, string to integer because we want to predict the number, which is like $10,000, $15,000 or $16,000, like those are samples. Okay, let's click uh, click next. We can also do a, like a profiling of the data set after creation, uh, if we want to like get more detailed information of the data set. So uh, let's just like, uh, these are the like basic information, let's create it. You will see the data set will be created and it will uh, be available in the Azure AutoML run information. So, okay, the data set is created. It takes a few seconds to see the data set in the, uh, like uh, to show it in the uh, like data set section. But again, like while we are getting uh, like it available, we're just gonna use the existing data set that I've already uploaded so that we won't have to wait. Okay, I have, up, I, I have selected uh, the price too, which is the same data set, nothing changed. And then I uh, clicked next. 
now we are going to select okay what kind of database it is what kind of experiment it is so i'm just saying uh automobile uh, price uh, prediction okay we also need to select a target column so if we have 15 columns so uh based on all those columns which column we are gonna like uh, uh like a uh, test or predict so the target column is the prediction column so in in our case it's a price you know which is already integer that's what i have selected and uh, select the compute type so i also need to select a, like a compute okay so the what is compute is it's the vm uh, where the model will run so i can either select a, like a as your computer compute cluster or compute instance so in the past we used to have aci and aks aci is as your computer instance uh, compute instance it's kind of like a, a single uh, like uh, instance of a single node as your compute cluster is like aks like a kubernetes cluster where there are like a multiple nodes multiple vms are involved in our case i'm just selecting compute cluster and then uh, you can see a uh, compute uh, cluster and it's telling me okay uh, I have one cluster with a, a standard DS3, V2, four, uh, core, 14 gig and everything. What if we select a compute instance? Uh, looks like I don't have any. So let's create a, like a new compute instance, a very small one, so that we also get to see what is compute and how to, be, uh, how to create this compute. So comp one, suppose, and uh, this one already exists. Okay, compute uh, suppose two. Okay, uh, CMP3. Okay, no, this name doesn't exist. I already have created a few compute just to accelerate that process, that's why. And I can select either I want a GPU machine or CPU machine, I have selected CPU. I can select uh, like a recommended or all options. I selected uh, recommended. I'm selecting like a very small machine just to like, uh, just to show and it shows the category, uh, the workload type, the number of cores and the cost. So let me click to create. And it takes a few minutes uh, to create. And uh, in the meantime, when it's creating, uh, we can just like uh, select uh, one existing one and uh, uh, show the overall approach. And that's why let's just cancel it. <laughs> okay, compute cluster. So I have just selected the existing cluster, click next. Uh, AML test three. No. Okay. Let's select. So now I need to select like which type of task it is. It is a regression because I'm predicting the number. And if I press next, it will do okay validation type, test data set, and everything. So am I pre providing a test data set? Uh, no, I can also like select a test split. So 10% of the overall data will be used as a test so that it gives us the metrics, like I say, good data, good model, bad model, that kind. And then I'm selecting, okay, finish. So what it will do, you can see, now it will start to like uh, uh, prepare and then it will start the training process. And it takes one to two hours to train in, in a, like a small model, like a small uh, VM, and it will give us the result. So that's how the training process works. So while instead of like waiting, let's just like uh, jump into like what I have already trained and show you. So this is the same model that I have already trained uh, yesterday. It took uh, one and a half hours and uh, you can see uh, everything is done. It is also like uh, completed. It's also like giving me like a small uh, warning. Okay, it's it's that advanced. No scores improved after over last uh, 20 iterations. So there is a thing called early stop when uh, the AML notices that, okay, the model performance is not updating. So it just like stops the overall approach, uh, the training approach. Okay, let's see what else is there uh, because we want to download the model. So it, it does all those validation of uh, data guard guardrails and the model. So how many models we have trained? We have already trained, you can see, uh, in like 30 plus models we have already trained. So out of all of them, the best model is this one, voting ensemble. So if we click this one to see, okay, this is the sampling, this is the normalization, root mean square uh, num value, and all those like, uh, if we want to uh, 
like see whether this model is explainable or not. It's a good model or not. So it gives all those information, uh, metrics, uh, all those data transformation option, how uh, the mo model was uh, done, uh, test result, uh, the as a preview, it says it's coming, all those like outputs, output logs, child runs and everything. Okay, our purpose is to download the model. So what happened when we download? So you can see it's it has downloaded. So what happened is it has downloaded these three files. One is content environment as a YAML file, model.pkl, the, this is the model that we have trained and this scoring file, it's a Python file. So a scoring file is the first file, like when we do the request, we send a bunch of like uh, data. So it's, uh, and we send it to scoring file. Scoring file takes the request, uh, process it uh, to make it more consumable by the model and then give it to the model. And then uh, based on the data that model receives, model responds uh, with a single uh, value, which is the prediction. And we a scoring file again takes it and send it back as a prediction values. So that's why we have this tree. Okay, that's good that uh, we have already downloaded the model and everything's done. We can do the model deployment in few steps in, in Azure ML. The first one is uh, like uh, deploying it from the uh, like uh, training uh, or the result. So, oh, you can see it's running. So if we go back here and uh, select all the model and uh, click this voting ensemble, there you can see there's an option. We can just select deploy a real-time endpoint or a deploy web service. So let's try here from the, like uh, as a web service first. So we can select a deploy uh, model uh, one. So this is the first model. We can select the compute type. It will be a, uh, okay, there cannot be any, uh, this kind of like uh, syntax. Now it's fine. The compute type, I have told uh, again, like SCI and AKS. So uh, we can, in our case, we are selecting SCI where we can use enable authentication or no. We can use uh, like uh, custom deployment. So if we have our own script, like uh, the script that we had to me a few minutes ago, like a uh, conda environment uh, or uh, like scoring file, we can select it. In this case, we are deploying it from the portal. So already it has everything. So if we just like click this one, it will be deployed automatically. So it's that easy. We can do the same thing uh, when we are deploying it to the uh, like uh, uh, deployed to in a case. So instead of SCI, we are just selecting a case and we can also select the uh, compute name. This compute is already created, but we can just select it and that's it. So that is a very standard approach. Now the thing is, okay, uh, we have seen that the compute was already created. So how do we create the compute so that we can do custom model deployment? So uh, you can see, uh, we just selected CMP3, it's getting created and all those things are happening. So they're like, as I said, there are two types of compute, compute cluster, compute inference cluster. So compute cluster, this is used for training purpose. So if we just select a new, uh, we can select uh, which is the location, uh, low priority or dedicated, we can select low priority, CPU or GPU, uh, like no, without GPU, normal CPU machine, select this one and next, and we can select compute name, suppose comp uh, 44, and we can also select the number of nodes. So this depends on the quota of your uh, like uh, account. Right now I have less, I didn't put extra. So it's as showing like this. So I can just click and it will be created in a few minutes. But if I want to create an AKS or uh, inferencing cluster where we want to deploy the model in multiple pods. So what happened, which uh, when uh, you saw that it was already done and it was showing. So I can click next uh, a new and they create new or existing. Let's create a new, and we will create it in West US region. So let's select West US. And you can also see uh, there are like lots of VM option. So in our case, you also need to know that what is the limit that you have. You cannot cross your limit of your account because uh, if I select a standard A3 four core uh, with the 12 cores uh, available in our, uh, in our coda, and then I can also select for production, you need to have minimum three node. Uh, it's three. For dev test, there is no limit. I can put that two node or again, I can put one node. If it's two, two. I can put the network configuration advanced if I have a, like a VNet, uh, uh, virtual network already created. In our, in our case, no. I can also create SSL configuration uh, or with my own, uh, with all the keys and everything. But in our case, no. And uh, I need to like put the 
compute name com 44 and then I, if i put create it will be created right away for the compute uh, compute cluster of uh, inference cluster of aks it takes few times like uh, maybe 5 to 10 minutes to create so that's why i'm showing the one that i have already created so this is the one that i have already created its name is baks it's a kubernetes service uh, it's already successfully deployed and it has a lot of like uh, monitoring and other options when uh, and this shows what is the situation of my uh, like uh, compute cluster so last one hour or last 24 hours how much i have used so as it's a new completely new cluster it's not showing uh, much of uh, that kind of things so okay as i said when i when we uh, deploy a model like a dev like a uh, uh, done with the training, we also like need to register that model and then deploy the model. So suppose we have already done a training as a custom model, uh, like a training in our local machine or in our GPU or somewhere else. All we want to use is deploy the model. So we need to register the model first. So uh, mod suppose 33, I'm just putting a name. We also need to select the framework. So what kind of model uh, framework it supports? It supports most of the available uh, like frameworks that we use in, in the world of AI, like uh, XGBoost, PyTorch, uh, TensorFlow, LightGBM, everything. So in our case, I just trained the model with automated machine learning and uh, I can select like for framework version one or two or whatever. And I also need to select the model here. Let's uh, select the model as a auto ML that is already trained model.pkl. And uh, if I just click register, boom, it will be registered in uh, right away, mod 33. And if you see, you can see these are the information, the version information, artifact, this is the like a model. There is no endpoint right now. Uh, and also like all the other information is there. Okay. So the model is already registered. Now we want to deploy the model. So let's go to endpoint. We want to do the deployment in two phases. One is real-time endpoint or batch endpoint. So in our case, let's do a, like a real-time endpoint. So create and endpoint name will be uh, RL deploy suppose one. And will it be a managed instance on Kubernetes? So uh, I can uh, select either of them. Let's see uh, managed. What kind of authentication there will be? Token key, uh, key token, I can select any of them. And then I need to select the model that I have already registered. So this is, I'm considering this as a custom model. I'm selecting it. And then I also need to select the uh, default deployment name, default suppose, uh, and then the next. Okay, now the uh, we also need to show the scoring file and also the environment. So in our case, the scoring file is the file that I have, we have downloaded. If you remember, we downloaded three files, scoring file, uh, like the model.pkl and the conda.yml file. This is a scoring file that's selected. And we also need to show, tell the, the, the uh, environment, okay, what will be the environment? How uh, will it be? We have multiple options. Either we can go for a custom environment. I'll show how the custom environment is done. And also our curated environment. So these are the environments that are already been created. I can just select like Azure ML, uh, ML flow Ubuntu, something like that, or Azure ML minimum, minimal Ubuntu, something like that, CPU inference. Uh, let's select this. And then I also need to show the size of the VM instance count. I can just put uh, one instance. Uh, it's a very small uh, model as a testing. And then I also like need, I can show like, okay, where the traffic will be allocated. If I have multiple model, multiple instance, I can select those 100%, 50% to get the uh, maximum out, uh, out of it. And then the next. So you can see the full review is there. And then we can like click and create a model. So it's, it's that easy. Uh, in some cases, we can also like create a batch model uh, as a batch prediction. Um, and if you want to do a, like a big model training in, in case of like, okay, you have done the training. Now you want to like uh, test the model for 10,000 rows, 10,000 values. So uh, then you can use this kind of like batch model. Uh, but in, in terms of like batch model, you need to also like need to provide um, batch uh, 33, four suppose, different kind of like configuration information, like how the batch file will be saved, uh, how the batch file uh, output will be uh, like uh, created or kept, what will be the size of the batch, uh, the scoring timeout, all those information, you can also like click and see what does the, uh, it mean, all those like uh, individual things. Oh, I canceled it, that's why. 
Okay, let's go back. Uh, show the batch information. So uh, batch 3044, next model selection. And I was showing this one, batch 44. And then we can select the dependency, which is scoring file. Again, they'll just like the before. But in case of batch, we cannot select these uh, like curated, uh, all those like available uh, like environment. We can expect, okay, we will use a, like a custom environment. That's why we need to select like a custom environment here. And then we can go for compute and everything else. So that's how we deploy uh, real time and batch environment. So you can see all those uh, models are already deployed. Uh, their container instance are managed both types. For the container instance, you can, when you select, you can see the REST environment uh, location, Swagger, uh, how to test it, uh, like as an editor from the JSON, how you will pass the data as an example value, how you can consume it, all those Python values, C sharp value, like a sample codes are already created for you so that you can easily use this endpoint to test it and also get all the deployment logs. Oh, uh, Deepak, bro, there's a question. Yeah, bro. Uh, I get one notification. Uh, this meeting might be end in next and 10 minutes. So okay. uh, I did, I schedule another one. I don't know, might be I, uh, you know, select less time. So there okay. is link in the meeting. So I also post that link uh, posting in Saskatoon Tech Talk and uh, tweeting okay. as well because there are a couple of folks. So uh, I think once you are done in 10 minutes, then we yeah. can zoom on that move link. to the other session. Yeah. Sure, perfect. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll be done in like uh, five minutes actually. Sure. So as I was showing like uh, environment, so uh, we used a uh, compute, we showed it uh, and the environment. So you can see in the environment section, already a lot of environments are created. So what is it doing is all those like for Azure ML PyTorch based model deployment uh, with CUDA and GPU, you need these are the uh, like dependencies. So all the full uh, Docker file is already created. You can just select it uh, during the time of deployment. And as I said, for custom uh, environment, you can also like go into custom and just click create. And you can also like see uh, CSTM suppose 44. You can select multiple types of environment, uh, Python virtual environment, Conda, Docker, Docker image. If uh, we select Conda YAML, we can just go down. Either we write our YAML code or upload a file where there is a, like a YAML file that I downloaded, just select, boom. And the next you can select it. And that's how it's that easy to create environment. It's that easy to create a uh, different kind of like uh, training uh, instance, uh, compute cluster, uh, inference cluster as a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, even you can bring your own a virtual, like a virtual machine or own database cluster here to use it. And uh, all the endpoints can be easily uh, like uh, validated and maintained here. All the models that you have registered uh, will be here and even if you have uh, like time series based operation, the example that I showed is AutoML. If you have time series, you can even do data set uh, monitoring, data drift, that kind of things as well. So uh, a lot of things are in uh, review, preview right now, but uh, it looks like a very complete platform. And uh, there are certain uh, like uh, products in the market that is also available that does uh, AML or deployment, that kind of things but you need to pay heavy uh, like subscription fee plus the compute fee for those cases. But in terms of uh, Azure machine learning, it's very easy to use. Uh, you won't have to pay any subscription fee. It's pay as you go. You can even like uh, uh, have uh, like a compute uh, instances or cluster reserved for one year, three year to say 40 to 60% uh, of the dollars that you're gonna use next one to three years. So. That's it from my presentation. If anyone has any question, please let me know. But uh, the purpose of this uh, meeting was to show how to download the model, how to deploy it as a single API, uh, as a web API, as a uh, like batch prediction as well. How to create the cluster, how to create the environment, how to register the model. And uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Thanks a lot, Rahat. Really appreciate it. It's such insightful. And I think I have a lot of scope to learn into AI space and uh, world is going towards AI. There is no doubt. Is anyone has any question, they could try jump over there. And uh, let me share Rahat uh, 
you know, LinkedIn detail and uh, different details. So where Rahat, would you, will you mind to share your LinkedIn profile? Yeah, so uh, I will. I will just like post my uh, LinkedIn information so that if anyone wants to uh, like uh, connect with me or if anyone has any question, feel free to ask me and uh, I'll be happy to answer. Okay, that would be great. So what, uh, let's, okay, Rahat LinkedIn is right there. So that would be great. So let's uh, jump into another meeting then. Yeah, perfect, I'll be there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. See you folks over there. Sorry for this confusion. <laughs>